Welcome back to All Chat, Episode 2. The only podcast on the internet that covers all four major regions each week. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Jack Dawes, with my co-host, Grayson Yada. How you doing, Grayson? I'm great. I'm great. We got the start of the LPL last night. Uh, great games in the LCK. Great games in the LEC. Great games in LCS. A lot of great debuts. Uh, just excited that we're on episode two. And I, I got to say, we have, so great. we have so many games to cover today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Week one was a definitely one. a lot easier uh, with yeah. no LPL and uh, no LCK yet to cover. But yeah. Now we're all we're we're up and running. All four now regions going. are going. Yeah, and it's and LPL is only going to get worse, and LCK <laughs> is only going to get worse, and yeah, there's only going to be more games. Did you know I watched uh, 15 LEC games in one day the other day just to to prepare for this? So, <laughs> that's wait, uh, wait. that's dedication right there. I mean, I was up till about four in the morning last night watching the LPL live, but oh my <laughs> 15 gosh. games in one day that sounds it, that it sounds like it's that. To a real person, it's You'll, at least you're prepped for this. That <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we're uh, doing my best to uh, to come with some kind of of analysis or or <laughs> thoughts in general to talk about. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's oh, do yeah. it. You want to you want to kick us off with some uh, some LEC? Do you have any thoughts there? You want me to jump in? Oh, I mean, you're the big LEC guy. I don't tune in too much, but I did see that BDS is now first place in sole possession of first place in the LEC. Yeah. yeah, BDS had quite the week, three wins. So they, they went two and one, you know, the week before this week, and then three wins this past week uh, with some some good wins, too. They really? had wins over Fnatic, uh, okay. Mad Koi, and uh, SK. Oh, wow. So top of the table. Yeah, a few of the teams that we kind of hit on last week were yeah. seeing – bds now kind of jump in there huh yeah i think it'll be interesting to, to talk uh, about mad koi again when we get back to there mm -hmm. um but on, on the bds front um i think the most interesting player on this team to me is adam yeah and god really his <laughs> oh oh the gods champs that's exactly where i was going yeah um the story of him at worlds in play-ins for people who remember last year at mm -hmm. worlds uh bds came in through plans they were the fourth place team they beat uh, North America's Golden Guardians to to get into plans, and there was uh, this whole thing for the plans of Worlds where Adam was picking the gods champ. So Garion, 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 <laughs> Darius, Set, and Olaf. Yeah. Um, and he's still he's running it back. He, really? He's he's just uh, he. Th these are his picks. He picks all those champs and and Cassante mostly. Uh -huh. That's that's kind of where he's at now. And I. I just wonder how long these picks are going to continue to work out for him mm -hmm. and whether they're they're gimmicky and it's just that there's not a lot of great teams in LEC who can stop him or if they're legit. Uh, and the, the only thing I have to say on that is that we did see Darius in the LCK mm -hmm. uh, with Keen picking him up for, yeah. for KT. He, he brought yeah. up with Darius and absolutely stomped the game. So I, I got to feel like there's some amount of of legitimacy to these gods picks yeah i mean they are world's team they're running it back with m most of their same roster right all but i understand is yeah. still under still over there nuke yeah. right it's just uh it's... they brought in ice for crowny okay yes yeah, yeah. so, i mean you already know that chemistry is there and yeah i think the lec is one of those leagues where any team can win on any given weekend at least in that top like five at, that's like, what it top feels five like. teams yeah, it's it's interesting that it's feeling kind of like LCK in that uh -huh. there seems to be more and more of a break between top five and bottom five. Mm. And I think in the LCK particularly, that's been a pretty clear thing in the last couple years now. Yeah, um, for sure. But that hasn't really been a thing in the LEC, and it's starting to become more of that now. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there seems to be teams at the top and, and teams at the bottom. So... Our top five right now, BDS, SK, uh, Team Heretics, Fnatic, G2, and then our bottom five being Mad, uh, Mad Koi, sorry, Team Vitality, Giant X, Rogue, and Carmine Corp. Okay. Um, which, uh, Carmine Corp has an interesting story to tell as well. Oh, but... that game, what was it, on Sunday? Oh, the, the Vitality game? Yeah, yeah. That was just 
That was a tough watch. <laughs> oh, early uh, worst game of the split. For yeah, me. I think that's that's early on, uh, and and just looking forward. Someone that something that um, Treats pointed out on Twitter is we have a Rogue versus Carmine Corp game coming up this weekend, uh-huh. and he tweeted out uh, a movable object versus a, a stoppable force. And, <laughs> and I just I don't even know if I can watch that game. Yeah, the, the level that these teams are playing at. Oh, it's it's so different than I the rest like, of the the LEC. Yeah, just the rest of Professional League of Legends. It feels like you know. Yeah, like you're seeing amateurish errors throughout some of these games and just yeah no one's on the same page it's just kind of tough to watch (laughs) i I think carmine corp is such a it it feels like fly quest from last year in Mm. na or vitality from last year where they have pieces that on paper are super hyped up and look like they can do damage Mm -hmm. and they're just not coming together uh and i think largely that's coming from a complete lack of trust and communication at least that's what it seems like to me when i'm watching these games Mm. it seems like the players are not on the same page and individually they have great moments that they don't capitalize on because Mm -hmm. they can't all be in the same place at one time there were fights throughout multiple of the games that they were playing where they would all show up to a team fight like at mm-hmm. dragon there was yeah. one game i'm trying to remember which game it is now um i think it was their their giant x game uh-huh. where they showed up to two or three dragon fights together and then throughout the course of the fight got broken up were on multiple different pages and were just picked off and didn't just didn't do anything yeah. they in the same game too they'll have moments where they go and make great looking um plays they'll they'll make a pick they'll uh have a really great engage some um even targamus who people have been really down on he had some great um plays during that game but Mm -hmm. they just they can't get on the same page yeah it feels like they're not able to execute on their leads very well either because yeah i know during that vitality game it it kind of felt like Obviously, I'm not a pro, so I can't really speak too much on the analysis side, but it felt like all their lanes were winning going yeah. into at least like the 20 minute mark, I want to say. <laughs> and, and even in that game, too, we, we saw some decent plays out of Sokin, um, mm-hmm. which he's been criticized for not being an L- LEC level mid, but he had, I, I think, I want to say he had a, a pretty great double kill uh, on his Corky at one point. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I'm sorry, that was his Trist game. Uh, I was thinking about the quirky game, but but even in these games, you have these players that individually are making decent plays, and you can tell that each of them have strengths, but they can just never they can never do it together, and that's what matters. Yeah. And I think that's what's setting apart these top five and these bottom five teams is the top five teams can get on the same page and win team fights together and do so frequently, and these yeah. bottom five teams. They have moments where they're doing really great, but it's oftentimes individual players and they can't get on the same page long enough to win a team fight largely. Mm -hmm. The old micro versus macro. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what separates a lot of these top teams from everyone else is their macro play and being able to be on the same page as a team. At least watching a lot of LPL and LCK recently, that definitely is a prevalent factor in why teams are winning games. It's that it's that macro play and teamwork for sure. It really is, and I I think that's what we're seeing recently, especially is that in pretty much all regions at this point, what what separates the top teams from the bottom teams is team fighting and playing together in macro play. Um, mm-hmm. I think we we see the same thing in the LCK, like you're talking about, where some of these teams who are considered the bottom teams can actually come in and have decent early games. Uh, They can win early games, keep up in early games with scaling comps, and they Mm -hmm. look pretty good, and then mid-game hits, and it completely falls apart. And sometimes it's even like one or two team fights and the game's over, but other times Mm -hmm. it's just mid-game comes along and it's just one bad choice after another, and then the other team shows how much better they are. Yeah, it really is just some of these team comps kind of coming together over the individual play. And I think that's something that we're going to be seeing a lot this split for sure, especially with all the new objectives and how those are kind of playing around with the void grubs. I mean, that those are super high priority right now. Yeah. Um, 
the LeBlanc, the side pushing LeBlanc has been super high pro- priority. The eighty uh, LeBlanc mid, yeah. I want to get yeah. into talking about some specific picks later on. Yeah, um, for sure. Because I think there's been some really interesting breakout picks this past week, as mm-hmm. well as just uh, new changes in priority, like that eighty LeBlanc, like you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But before we jump away from the LEC real quick, it, there's actually one team that I wanted to talk about the most, uh, which is actually Team Vitality. Okay. Uh, it's a team that went 0-3 the first week, and this last mm-hmm. week came back with a 3-0 week. Oh, and wow. I give a lot of that credit to Vithio in the mid lane. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy, he looked pretty insane on Akali. Uh, had a really good, um, I want to say he had an Ari game. Yeah, the second game he had a really good Ari game. Uh, and then he had a not not as great game three against G2, but still ended up in a win. Uh, mm-hmm. And in that game, oh, he was wow. playing Corky. But if you look at his Ari and Akali games, uh, he's just, it, it felt like in some ways he was dragging the team across the finish line. Oh, wow. um, yeah. He has the most kills in the LEC right now. Um, most <laughs> average kills per game as well. I think he's at 30 kills now, which is um, five kills per game on average. Yeah. Um, he is just, he seems like one of those players who might be jailed a little bit. Really? Okay. Um, where he could be really making moves on one of these top teams mm-hmm. and is really putting in the work to to pull this team up into the top half of the standings, which is interesting when you have Karzi and Hillisong on this team yeah. as well, who are two very notable players. Yeah. Two, I mean, those are veteran guys right there. Yeah. But yeah. it, it really feels like the Vitio show a lot of the time. Uh, Karzi has some moments, too, where you can tell that he's putting in the work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he, I think Karzi actually has a higher damage share on the team than Vitio does. But uh, it really feels like a lot of the team fight wins uh, and, and just wins in general that this team are pulling off or off the back of Vitio. Wow. Okay. I mean, how is their game against G2? I didn't even realize that they beat them. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting one. That was the most team fight game that they had, it felt like. It okay. felt like the first two games against Rogue and KC were pretty much um, VTO putting in the work on, on Akali and Ari. And then in their uh-huh. third game against G2, that's one where you had Nyla Senna for mm. uh, Karzi and Hillisong, which okay. you would never guess that Se- Senna would ever be a Hillisong champ. But uh-huh. he pulled it off. He was, I thought, one of the best performing members of the team in that game. Uh-huh. Um, I thought Karzi had a really good Nyla game as well. Uh, and I think that was Vitio's worst game, actually. So that was one where it felt like the team kind of came together and it didn't feel like it had to be a, uh, a Vitio solo carry. Got it. Okay. What about uh, Team Heretics here? I kind of yeah. want to hear your thoughts on them really quick. Because they did play G2 this weekend. They did lose... They did, but they did yeah. beat SK to start off week two, and that was a team that we were pretty high on last week. Yeah. So first about the G two game, I'll say that uh, we finally had all five members of 2019 G two on the Rift <laughs> at one time. So that, oh, yeah. that was a pretty just. Cool, if though. anyone is looking for a game to watch that just for fun, just to maybe reminisce if you've been around the scene for a while, go watch that game because it's just cool <laughs> to see all five of those guys on the Rift at the same time. Um, but yeah, they took a win against SK. Um, it was a really controlled game from what I remember. Mm. And they played Senna Seraphine in that game. Oh, wow. We're going to talk about Senna later because okay. uh, I think Senna is really underrated in the West mm. and really shows up. Um, so I think Perks had a pretty decent performance that game, but it was really the Senna Seraphine comp that okay. just, you know, it looked like a monster of a comp. Dang, Senna Seraphine. I feel like I've seen that somewhere else, but I don't remember exactly where. It might have been the there's, LCS. There's been a few others, yeah. Okay. I think it was played in the LCS. Uh, I'm, I'd have to check my notes, but I think it was, it might have been FlyQuest that played it. Got um, it, okay. But there's there's been a few Seraphines, and there's been a few uh, Senna's, and both champs have looked really good. I think the one game where it didn't look good, um, G2 pulled out seraphine sona against vitality and oh. that looked completely useless <laughs> yeah interesting <laughs> it's so different than uh senna seraphine because you just you, you lose all the damage pretty much yeah. it's it's completely ap you lose all the the ad damage 
mm-hmm. and you don't have you know the the Senna turning into a Sona means you don't have the other ADC. Um, yeah. You just have another support, so you have sh- uh, shields and heals for days, but there, there's no damage. Yeah, so you got to wait for your. Yeah, yeah, wait for the rest of the team to kind of come online, right? Yeah, which yeah. means you're you're disadvantaged the the whole game until you can get online, and it just it never happened for him. It was a complete stomp. Got so, it. Damn. Yeah. Are uh, there any other games that you want to hit on here from the LEC? Not much. I, I'm not that impressed by Giant X. I'm uh-huh. not impressed by Rogue. Uh, Carmine Corp has a lot of work to do if they're trying to scrape together any wins. Uh-huh. Um, I think there's a chance that they could go 0-9. I don't know when. I, that might have happened last year, one split, but that would be a, a historic crash of a team. A historic with, debut. With such high, yeah, a historic debut, <laughs> especially for a team with such high expectations. Yeah. Uh, the only other teams that we haven't really talked about, SK, Fnatic, and Mad, um, kind of on the Mad front, or Mad Koi, I, I, mm-hmm. I'm going to continue to mess that up, but Don't um, worry. on the Mad Koi front, uh, I thought a lot of the games look like it's just El Yoya making things happen in the early game, or they lose. Mm. Uh, and interestingly, their support, Alvaro, he actually has the highest kill participation on that team. Um, oh. I, I looked into it a little bit because I figured it was just El Yoya doing everything. And it's actually Alvaro that has the highest kill participation. Oh, but it's pretty man. close between the two. Mm-hmm. And when you look at how Mad Koi are, are ever winning games, it's a lot of uh, El Yoya on Viego and making stuff happen bot early and getting the the ball rolling. And it seems mm. like every time they pick a fight without El Yoya there, it's not it doesn't work out. So no. it's really, you know, this veteran jungler in El Yoya who's proving himself mm. to be I think a pretty good ju- uh, jungler in Europe and I think he'll continue to be a good jungler in Europe for a while and mm. then four rookies and it it really feels like that sometimes when oh. they're in game and it's just if El Yoya can make it happen, it's great. And if he can't, then maybe Supa is doing something. Maybe Alvaro is doing something. And mm-hmm. other than that, it's it's pretty lost. So just a one man show over there at Mad. So kind of overperformed like. week one. It it seems like or they're yeah. able to at least catch all those breaks. I think that they're going to end up somewhere in the middle of the pack. We'll, we'll uh-huh. see if they make playoffs, but I think. They have some pretty clear limitations of the team, especially in their mid and top laner, mm-hmm. that uh, are, are going to be exploited by the other top teams and are going to keep them kind of in that middle of the pack area. Mm. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. One more thing before we leave the LEC and start to talk about uh-huh. the LCK a little bit. Um, we we got to talk about the plague that that's come to <laughs> the Western regions. We have uh-huh. to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, the the virus the the elephant that is um, Lucian, Lucian, and this we talked about it a little bit last week. But uh-huh. stop picking Lucian. <laughs> <laughs> this is my PSA. If you want to win, don't pick Lucian. It it's <laughs> not good. It's I want I want to um, read some stats to you and have have you guess something real quick. Yeah, so, for sure. Overall, across all four major regions, Lucian mm-hmm. has uh, 22 games. Okay. 11 of those games are in Western regions. What would you guess the win rate is for Lucian in North America oh. and Europe? Would you say it's like maybe 25%? Maybe they're only getting a quarter of the wins. Would you say it's like 50%? Maybe I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. Would you say it's like 10% maybe, like only a few? What would you say the win rate is? There's no gale force anymore, right? Like that's out of the game? So. I don't think so, yeah. Just to I'm take, gonna say I'm gonna say like a 25 percent win rate, like maybe two or three of those games. Yeah, that's a good guess. It's zero. <laughs> yeah, it's zero. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, well, Lucian then. is zero and eleven <laughs> across uh, all the Western teams that have played him so far. Um, here's some other interesting facts about that. He's been played by nine different AD carries, nine different teams. So there's only been two repeats. Mm-hmm. Um, and and he's zero and eleven across all those games. Interestingly, in the LCK and the LPL, he is seven and four. Uh, but when you look at those games, f- uh, five out of the seven of those games are sub thirty minutes, which means they're they're just you know Snowball. getting going early and yeah. can actually close out a game. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and four out of the seven are pretty clear cases of better team plus better AD carry mm. uh, beating a, a worse team with a worse AD carry. So uh-huh. um, a little skewed potentially. Yeah, potentially a little bit skewed. And three of the wins in the East are all Gumiyushi. Oh. So the 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 really standout wins in the uh, the East at this point in in LPL and LCK are uh, Deft managing a thirty nine minute win against Aiming, uh-huh. uh, Guma beating Pays in one game of the the G two versus T one series, but mm-hmm. he had zero kills. It was a low kill game, but uh-huh. it was zero zero and four or something like that. Yeah, uh, and then the, just uh, recently in this most recent LPL game. Uh, hope on anyone's legend uh-huh. absolutely smurfed it and beat FPX uh, and he he was 10-1-6 in, in 26 minutes so right Jeez. now <laughs> hope is basically the Lucian that everyone thinks that they are uh, and it, it should absolutely be dropped immediately by western teams a- and my my thoughts about this are I'm guessing it's a scrim pick I'm guessing that you're getting 80 carries and scrims who see it working um, from Eastern teams from LPL, LCK, mm-hmm. and they're playing it in scrims, and they're they're stomping scrims early, and then the scrims are FFing or not finishing, or they're just closing the game out super quick, and they're like, oh, oh, this is a great pick. Um, or they're just seeing it in, in Korea Other, and China yeah. and thinking, oh, this is great. But then oh, once you get on stage, yeah, you get these much more controlled games where... <laughs> The, the pick can't snowball as hard, and teams are not, in, in the West, teams are not as good as closing out games. Mm-hmm. So you end up with this pick that usually gets ahead in the early game like it's supposed to, and then mid-game comes, and it's completely unusable. It's, it's just hard to pilot in the mid-game. So we were talking about Senna before. That's my cure. I think yeah. Senna is the Lucian cure. I think uh, maybe LS was right all along. I think... Drop the Lucian, stop being a sinner, pick up the Senna, be a saint, you know? Um, <laughs> I, that That's the way, I think. I think it's always just tough, too, with a lot of these teams that are uh, picking, like, the Aphelios, the Zaya. I, those those uh, picks scale so much better than that Lucian. Yeah. And when you have them on the right guys, like, those turn into some scary picks late game. And I think yeah. with a lot of these games dragging on... Uh, at least in the West, I feel like a lot of the games are, are you know, 30 minutes are over. Uh, you know, those picks, they shine, you're right? Once once it's the late game, mid-late game, that's where we're starting to see some crazy damage. Like, I've I've seen a few Aphelios games uh, over the last couple days, and some of the damage that he does at three items, it's a little silly. It, it's insane. <laughs> it's starting to feel back like release Lucian days where he was just nuking people. Yeah, I think Aphelios is a super strong pick. I think Zaya is a super strong pick. And I think you're totally right that um, these games in the West are drawing out more and they're not closing them out. And Lucian has to win in under 30 minutes pretty much. You know, mm-hmm. five, I think five of his seven wins came in under 30 minutes. So, yeah, if you're not it's getting strictly snowball. Game, yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested to see if Berserker picked them up, if he'd be able to get a, a win on it, just because mm. Cloud9 is looking like such a dominant team. Yeah, uh, we're going to get of those... to that for sure. Yeah, um, But I'd be interested to see if, if Berserker might have, if there might be enough of a gap between C9 and the other teams that, that Berserker could pick up a win on it. But I think largely you're only getting wins on Lucian if there's already a team gap. So I I just, I don't, maybe in Korea and China, there's value in the pick because people are good enough to end the game quickly. But Mm -hmm. just in in Europe and uh, uh, LCS, I I don't know that we're (laughs) ever going to see it do well this season. Yeah. I think along with LCS too, having the live patch, like Mm -hmm. we're going to see so many other bot lane metas, I feel like, or at least other types of picks coming in and out. Uh I think it's going to be really interesting to kind of see how that bot lane meta develops. I saw Ziggs last night in the LPL. I mean, that's always oh, around. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. seeing a lot of really interesting picks just all throughout the regions. Um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of how that bot lane meta shifts and if we're going to see any other champions kind of slot in there. I think, speaking of, of interesting picks, let's talk L- LCK. 
Oh, yeah. I'm down. You want to jump in? They've, they've had some really interesting picks. Yeah. KT D+. Plus. I just want to start there because that yeah. was the banger of the oh LCK week. Such a uh, good series. Such I mean, a good series. <laughs> it's... it's uh, I don't want to say it's rare to have 2-1 matches in the LCK, but right now it's pretty rare. That was only the yeah. second 2-1 match. Um, and it was actually the second time now where it was like a reverse sweep, kind of, technically. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So KT, this was a team that we talked about a lot last week. My favorite uh, team in the LCK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are so fun to watch. I love this team. And I thought I loved D plus Kia, but I think when I was watching those or that that match, all I could think about was like power of friendship. These guys are these guys are going to be unreal. Yep. Perfect looks really good. Like he, he looks does. he looks really good. Yeah, I love seeing Pioshik back in the in the LCK, doing well as well. Yeah, I mean everything about this team, like they play so well together. It feels like they're just an oiled machine. I know, you know? already. Yeah. Which we talked a little bit about last week, but it, it hasn't fallen off. It, yeah, it already I mean, feels like they're just vibing. Yeah, we got to see them play like a solid team this time. Like D plus is you know a team that everyone has at least in their top five for the LCK. Yeah, and it was a close series, uh, but I thought KT just looked really good. I thought they they looked like the more complete team. It looked like they're all on the same page. Um, Obviously, game one, they lost, but games two and three, at least game three was a stomp. Game two was a little bit of a nail biter. But... I thought, for my money, that game two of uh, D plus versus KT was the best game of the LCK for, for me so mm -hmm. far. I think yeah. just out of all the games, it was such a nail biter. Yeah. It, it looked so competitive. Like, you can tell that Showmaker wants to win. Mm -hmm. Um it ended up being a, a KT win, but Damn One looked, or not Damn One, D Plus, looked competitive mm -hmm. for about 90% of it, I'd say, right yeah. up until the end where KT ended up taking it. But the whole way through, it wasn't that, that Damn One, or D Plus, man, I'm never going to get that <laughs> right. Uh, it wasn't that D Plus just rolled over and died. That second game was really a good game. I yeah, think. that one was a banger. 45 minute game. You have. Uh... I mean, Showmaker on Akali, that's always going to be fun. <laughs> you have Deft going into a 45-minute game on Aphelios. <laughs> yep. like he was just melting people. Yeah. Uh, Perfect went 0-8, and, and the that's Rooker... Right. That, was, that was the bad, <laughs> the bad Perfect game. Yeah. yeah, I just remember the commentators talking about why does he, why is he trying to buy the Rooker? And like, he kept on trying to... He was down 0-6, I think, at one point, and he was rushing for the rooker and just there. give it up <laughs> yeah i don't i don't even know what it does but the commentators weren't too happy about it <laughs> <laughs> honestly overall like just from a viewer's perspective this was the match of the week for sure yeah i thought game three was good too that i thought perfect really redeemed himself in that mm -hmm. third game on nar yeah. that was a monster yeah NAR game um, hopefully we'll be able to put some clips in from that game, but he just had some insane team fights on that champ, and uh, the the casters talked about it a little bit in the game too. But they were like, "This is why you let this guy play NAR because he might be the best NAR in the LCK." Yeah, um, they had that fight around drag like Dragon Pit, right? I want to say, yeah, where yeah. Pioshik went in, and then Perfect just went in and cleaned it all up. Oh man, he <laughs> he just had some absolutely that was. If there was any redemption game for Perfect after that that game two, mm -hmm. it was it was the game three NAR game. That, yeah, it was yeah, and that, that won them won the series a out of a rookie. Yeah, yeah. and it, it won them the series absolutely. Yeah, so if I'm looking at a rookie coming in, I want to see what Perfect did, where you can show that even after just a pretty awful game, a real like you know hit to the mental, yeah, you can come back and still smurf on top players. Mm -hmm. Which is, that's really reassuring for yeah. that team with those guys around him. Oh my gosh. He's going to blossom for sure. Yeah. Uh, another match that I want to touch on really quick before we, honestly, it was kind of a lot of stomps throughout the, throughout the week for LCK. So there isn't too much that I really want to hit on. Uh, oh. The, uh, it was the Hanwha Life Series. 
because that was our well our second look at Hanwha Life. But I thought Kwandong is a team that we kind of uh, talked about last week as potentially being a sleeper pick. Right. And I thought they didn't play bad against Hanwha. No. Yeah, I saw the 2-0 before I, I had to go back and watch um, like a replay of it. I wasn't able to watch it live. So I saw the 2-0, mm-hmm. fully expecting a, a two-game absolute shellacking stomp. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't that. I yeah. thought KDF had some really strong early games. Mm-hmm. Um, they were able to hold on really well in a couple of them. And ultimately, I think HLE just got the better of them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see. We'll see about KDF. They are... They're they're zero four right now, yeah. <laughs> but they've only played T one and HLE. Yeah. So I still think there's a possibility that they rise to the top of some of these bottom teams. But like we were talking about in the LEC, there's a pretty top top five bottom five league in the LCK, and I, I don't see them breaching into the top five. Yeah, I don't think so at this point. I think Hanwha Life, they they're one of those teams right now that feels like if they play a top team, it's going to be a coin flip. You know. Yeah, where yeah. they might not have the best early game. Obviously, all their players are good. They know how to win games. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it seems like maybe it's going to be one of those teams that doesn't perform to their expectations. Yeah, like they they are two and zero right now, but they've only played not so great teams. And I'm yep. I'm just curious to see how they're going to stack up against a Gen G or a T one. Me too. I, it seems to me like T1 and Gen G are going to rule the league again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think KT is honestly looking really good. Yeah. I think I put KT above HLE. Even though um, the KT lost that game to D+, I, I mm-hmm. think if you put KT up against HLE, I, I, my money's on KT for winning. Yeah, it. me too. Um, so I would say those are my top three is Gen G T one and K T and then I think H L E and D plus have some some proving to do. Yeah. And then the bottom but I still five. Think top five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's definitely I think we can kind of solidify that top five through sure. through one full week. Just yeah. watching the games. You can you can just tell that there's a huge gap between the you know, the top five and the bottom five. Yeah. So there's not really too much else to hit on with the LCK. I just uh, quickly want to highlight a match that's coming up this Saturday night for those of you uh, in America or North America. Uh, T1 is playing. I want to say it's the Battle of the Telecoms. Uh, I wanted to. Yeah. Oh, wait. I, oh, I hold was, on. It was HLE. It is HLE. Yeah. So. HLE is going to get that test, but they do play KT. Yeah. Yeah. So they're playing KT on Friday, which Mm -hmm. is the day that this will go up. So we won't have seen that yet. And then they're playing HLE on Sunday, I think. Yeah. And then we also have Gen G versus D plus. So that's going to be, I think that's going to happen the day that we upload this as well. Uh, Yeah. But regardless, there's a lot of really good games or matches this week in the LCK. So, uh, we're going to have some updates, some juicy updates for you guys next next week for sure. Uh, yeah, lots of big games, lots of fun games. Yeah, but make sure you for tune sure. into that T1 Hanwha Life match. I think that's probably going to be one of the better matches uh, for the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I expect a, a lot from that one. Uh, okay, jumping into LCS if you're ready. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so let me, let me actually pull up their standings real quick. Um, at the top of the table, we got Cloud9 and FlyQuest, both yep. with 2 0 starts. Um, Kia, NRG Kia uh, are 1 and 1 with Dignitas, Team Liquid, and 100 Thieves. And then Shopify Rebellion, the new team, and Immortals are sitting bottom of the table. Mm-hmm. And where I want to go first is to these 2 0 teams because yep. I think Cloud9 <laughs> has. I, I'm a huge Cloud9 fan. We talked about how dominant they're going to be, we talked about how good they are, how unbeatable they are. They're proving it, I think. Mm-hmm. They had two incredibly dominant games. They weren't close. Yeah. Um, I'm not worried about them. Uh, they played NRG, who are the, the reigning champs, and 100 mm-hmm. Thieves, who, for their credit, 100 Thieves are looking pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people had them eighth place. I don't think they're going to end up eighth place. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a good chance they make playoffs, but we'll yeah. see. I think so, um, too. Yeah, but they, I, I thought Cloud9, two really clean games, absolute stomps. Uh, and the other side of that coin with FlyQuest also being 2-0, uh, good for them. 
but also I thought not as clean. I think the the FlyQuest games against uh, Shopify and IMT. So first of all, two the, of the, the two bottom teams, teams. Yeah. and I thought both games were not as clean as the C9 games. Mm. Um, where C9 was playing against two teams that I would say are, are better teams. Yeah. So for my money, Cloud9 absolutely stomped De- it. They're doing Deserves great. to be there on that top spot. Yeah. FlyQuest I, maybe a little more questionable. I think so. I think yeah. once we see FlyQuest play Cloud9, NRG, Team Liquid, I think once they start playing those teams, they're going to mm-hmm. start falling in the rankings a little bit. Yeah. Just because I didn't love how clean their games were. Um, but I think that they also have a lot of room for improvement and they could absolutely get to a place where they are cleanly stomping these other teams. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent within their power to do that with the roster that they have. Um, just from what they showed this last week, I'm not, I don't feel confident saying that they're at the same level that cloud nine is. Yeah. I mean, FlyQuest uh, game plan pretty much is feed Mossy, right? (laughs) It seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So we'll see how long that, that keeps up, but. On the C9 side, you have five studs in every single lane. So, Actually, a, a fun fact about this that I don't think we mentioned before. Um, this is the only LCS roster to ever assemble three MVPs on one team in Blabber, JoJo, and Berserker. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, the really didn't interesting... Vulcan win MVP too? Bruh. I don't think so. No, no? He's, okay. he's won the uh, LCS a couple times, but he's never won oh, MVP. Oh, okay. Um, The really interesting thing about that, too, when you talk about super teams and teams that are able to assemble players of this caliber, Mm -hmm. you're often looking at things like the Vitality roster from last year, like the FlyQuest roster from last year, like Mm -hmm. some of these Team Liquid teams that don't end up performing. And they were talking a little bit about it on the broadcast, but it seems like the reason that that happens is you shove five players together who have never played together or haven't had interest in playing together, or maybe like one or two of them have played together Mm -hmm. and they're just five really good players. And you say, go play well. Yeah. Um, And they don't have any of the synergy and they end up crumbling. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the thing that's just different about this cloud nine roster is um, you, you have fudge and blabber who have played together for three years, four years, something Mm -hmm. like that. Uh, You have Vulcan coming back onto the team who has played with uh, Fudge and Blabber before, has also played with JoJo Mm -hmm. on EG, where they had an incredibly dominant team as well. You have Berserker, who's played with Fudge and and Blabber for a while now, and now you have JoJo coming in, who hasn't played with the other C9 guys, but has played with Vulcan. So there's synergy between every member of this team. There's no, like, five good players, shove them together, good luck. Mm -hmm. It's three players who've been, who stayed on the team together, a returning player, and the returning player has played with the mid laner that's coming yeah. in. And they're all incredibly high caliber players. So this team to me is giving G2 2019 vibes. Mm. And I think if we see good performances out of them this year, this is a team that could stick together. As long as C9 has the money, mm-hmm. this team could be together for a while. Yeah, I think they know too. You know, yeah, C9 I knows so. that they are that team right now. It, I mean, yeah. A lot of times with these super teams, it's it's a clash of egos. You know, it's it's it might not even be a synergy problem. It's just I'm gonna do what I want. But these guys, they all team fight well together. They all know, like they're all on the same page with each other, and they're not letting their egos kind of get in their way. Obviously, they all have stacked resumes at this point, but yeah. it feels like they're all just coming together and they're setting that group goal of like let's win each game, let's take game like each game one at a time and you know, see how we do. Because obviously the expectations are huge. They know that, they know that, you know, they're the easy favorites to win the LCS. And so I think as long as they maintain that and they get more and more comfortable playing with each other, uh, they, they might, you know, they might make some waves internationally even too. Hey, you said it. (laughs) (laughs) Not me. Uh, Yeah, no, I think you're right. I I think there's absolutely a chance that this team... this is the most, like, it's too early. Clearly, yeah. it's too early. They it's too, too early, games, but, but one can already, dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a team that I have confidence in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and part of that, like we've said with some other teams, like KT, they feel like a power of friendship team uh-huh. that also has three MVPs and are this super stacked roster. Yeah. Um, and that's a really rare thing to have. Mm-hmm. So... 
it, it feels like they're creating MVP level players outside of JoJo coming in. Mm-hmm. It feels like they've created MVP level players similar to what G2 has done. In my opinion, similar to what T1 has done. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big comparison to make the, yeah. to, to T1 to Gen G yeah. to uh, G2 2019. Mm-hmm. But um, fingers crossed, and if all things go well, I think we might see a similar trajectory out of this team this year. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Uh, one team that I want to quickly hit on is 100 sure. Thieves. Yeah, I thought 100 Thieves looked really good uh, first off against Team Liquid. Mm. Um, I thought Quid. Quid is, I mean, I saw him a little bit while he was with Gen G. Uh, right. he, I think he was subbing for a couple games maybe last, last or a couple years ago. Uh, but I think he's coming into his own mm-hmm. here in the LCS. He the played half player. a split. Yeah, the one player to stay on 100 Thieves, too. And mm-hmm. no one would have guessed it, and he's he's making it work. Yeah, 100%. And I think the rest of the team falls in around him and mm-hmm. looks, I mean, they look pretty good for a team of players that haven't really played together at all. Yeah. And Sniper coming in with his first game being a dub, that's huge. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. I'm And on Riven, too. You know? Yeah. I'm... Like that's that's a pretty cool way to enter the LCS is to mm-hmm. pick your signature champ and get a dub on it. So uh-huh. um, I thought just for him, kudos because that that was a cool way to enter the LCS and a pretty impressive way. He yeah. wasn't maybe the the main player in that game, but still, it was good to see. He looked, uh, he already looks like he's a serviceable top laner. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd already put him at least middle of the pack, probably not in the top two or three, uh, but somewhere in the middle of the pack. He looks serviceable and uh for such a young guy coming in too i think there's a lot of upside for him yeah and i love i love river on this squad too i think yeah. river i mean on on golden guardians he was always solid and yeah i think coming in here being a vet, like a veteran presence i mean this is such a young team uh i mean meach was playing in the challengers league last year yep. ayla found himself teamless right i want to say because he's on he was he was on yeah, eg he before i think EG or stuff he was on i think he ended up on fly quest or something yeah but yep. like just uh kind of like a group of misfits here and some young guys that are looking to make some tides within you know their own professional careers which i think is really exciting yeah because a lot of these guys they haven't really made a name yet for themselves i mean quid had such high expectations coming from you know, one of the top organizations in the LCK. Sniper obviously had his expectations. Uh, yeah. Meech, I guess, coming off of a, a DSG win, I'm, I'm sure there's some type of expectations on making that jump. So I think I'm really excited to see how 100 Thieves is going to play over the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got for the LCS, if there's any yeah. other teams that you want to hit on. Sure, yeah, I have like one or two others. Um, NRG, they lost to Cloud9. It, it was going to happen. This mm-hmm. team looks insane. Yeah. But came back, got a win over Dig. Um, Palafox, huge game, 8 0 on Corky. Cool. Um, people sleep on him. And I know it's like JoJo PN fever, understandably, but you, you can't, you have to stop sleeping on Palafox. Yeah. Uh, he's not a middle of the pack mid laner. He's top two. Yeah. It's, it's him and Jojo. I think, mm-hmm. um, he, he showed why he had an excellent game. Um, there was a lot of solo kills that game, which mm-hmm. I thought was interesting. Uh, and then there was a lot of fighting top between Dokla and rich, which just made for some fun, uh, early game stuff happening, uh-huh. but really happy for NRG to get that win. Uh, the other two teams, or yeah, the other two teams I want to talk about are Shopify Rebellion and Immortals at the bottom. Uh-huh. Um, Shopify Rebellion starting O2, but this team feels like they have potential. Mm. I think that this team will not end bottom two. They played against FlyQuest, they played against TL, two teams that we expected to be at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't expect Shopify to break top three i don't think it's going to happen um i i could absolutely see them making playoffs um and i thought that they had some decent looks and died to picking lucian you know mm-hmm. they wild turtle went lucian for two games and lost both uh-huh. and, you know it's 011 so yeah. stop picking <laughs> lucian but other than that <laughs> i thought they had some pretty good looks actually um so i expect this team to 
to do things. I, I expect them to contest with Dignitas. I expect them to contest with 100 Thieves. I expect them, um, when they go up against Team Liquid again, I think that they'll contest with Team Liquid. Um, and I, I expect them to consistently beat this Immortals team, mm -hmm. which are yet again looking to sprint their way to the bottom uh, <laughs> and go no wins. They're so. tanking for the first pick, but there's no draft in, in League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's it. It's exactly that. They, I'm Every split, I'm unimpressed by Immortals, and yeah. they're not looking to do more than that for me. Um, I, I don't love this Immortals team. I don't love this Dignitas team. I'm interested to see where they go, but, you know, Im Immortals lost to Dig in the first game. They lost to Fly in their second game. I'm not not terribly excited. I don't. Yeah. I'm not seeing things that make me go, uh, oh, wow. "Yeah, this team has potential. Yeah, this team is going to crush it." It's uh -huh. a lot of just, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they played. Oh yeah, Immortals yeah. is in the LCS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Immortals is in the LCS. Yeah. So they, they had one of the LCS games of all time. Yeah. So, um, I think that's about it for, for the LCS for me is uh, some really good stuff out of Cloud9, some really good stuff out of FlyQuest. Um, Shopify looking to push their way up there. Not so great looks out of Immortals. Um, and then some teams in the middle who are fighting their way to the top and the bottom. And we're only a week in too. So I think there's yeah. there's plenty of room for a lot of this to change. We're, Every, we've only seen top teams well. really play top teams, you know. Yeah. Um, so... I'm excited. I'm excited for the LCS coming up. Me too. They're doing some interesting things on the broadcast too. Just before yeah. we jump over to the LPL, uh, one of the things I noticed is uh, the LCS is doing Twitch polls yeah. where the Twitch polls affect some part of the broadcast. Like the inter so, like the post-game interviews. Yeah. yeah. So they did, um, which player do you want to see in a post-game interview? They did that a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, they did what lane should we focus on, which I thought was really oh, interesting. Like they had an actual video. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they had a, a Twitch poll where they had Twitch vote for what lane they wanted to see the camera on for most oh, of the game. Okay. Um, so it literally affected the coverage, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then they did one for River uh, in his game where it was Will River gank over or under five and a half times. And then every time he ganked, they popped up a little graphic of him smiling with a thumbs up, <laughs> which ended up being really funny because uh -huh. he, he had, I think only three ganks and they all failed pretty horribly. No. <laughs> um, so it ended up being this really funny little thumbs up river with uh, no real success. Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting to see them do this. I think, LCS is taking steps that other regions aren't in terms of diversifying themselves, which mm -hmm. I think is really smart. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to transition really quickly on the fan engagement, things like sure. that. The LPL, I was watching last night on their stream. Mm. Um, it was the... Uh, what team is Angel on? It was the... Uh, FPX, is that right? FPX. Or anyone's anyone's legend. Anyone's legend, Yeah. Wait, uh -oh. let me see. Uh, uh oh, which one is it? No, wait. Oh, oh God. It was, he's no, on he's OMG. On, he's on OMG. He's on OMG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, don't listen to me. Just move on quickly. I was about to say Nip. So, uh, oh, man. yeah. After the OMG uh, Team WE match, mm -hmm. they did fan interviews where a fan from the audience got to come up, say something to you know each one of the laners. And take a picture with them after the wow. game. And that was like a thing for, it's like a fan meet and greet, but you're selected from the crowd. I know in the LCK, they do post-game fan meet and greets where you have to right. like wait in a long line and whatnot. But this was like straight up, you come up to the stage, you say what you what you want to say into the mic, and you get to take a picture of them, take home a t-shirt. And I thought things like that, that was really cool too. That's really cool. I didn't realize that. I hadn't seen that. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah, I had no idea. Uh but as I was watching the stream, I was like, why are they, why are they all just standing up there post-game? And yeah. they were, wow. yeah, it was all about the fan engagement. And I think that's something that League of Legends is, you know, between the LCS, the LPL, LCK, obviously LEC has a lot of fans as well. I think we're, oh, we're time. seeing a lot more fans and the more fan, en fan engagement that we have moving forward. I mean, I think it's, it's only going to be things, positive. Right? Yeah. 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 Speaking of Angel, too. Uh, he had some monster games against WE. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't expecting a lot out of that series, but it was cool to see Prince play on yeah, WE. That's um, why I tuned in for the first uh, for the first place. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't 
<laughs> oh my gosh! Out of him, <laughs> dude, I cannot believe. Live up to it. <laughs> yeah, I but. can't believe I stayed up for like two hours. You know, the the series started at one in the morning <laughs> for that first game. That was like the, it was three, three to kills one to three. Yeah, forty three minutes. Yeah, I was that like, is the oh least gosh. LPL game I've ever heard of in ever. Yeah, uh, like here's my notes. Yeah, let's hear them. Jack's jungle for OMG. Uh, yeah. That was something I was surprised about. Prince yeah. on Aphelios. Damn, yeah. this game boring AF. No <laughs> words. Mid game. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's all I have. I know. I, I had nothing to I was uh my only notes for that one was OMG kind of losing all game, three kills to three at forty three minutes, <laughs> and then OMG gets three kills at forty three to forty four minutes and ends the game. Yeah. That was and, how the game went. It kind of felt like that's how the whole series was. It was just a super slow series. Both yep. the games were just super long, over 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Prince was scaling on his Aphelios, what was that, in the first game? Mm-hmm. And just they couldn't do anything with it. I mean, he was on a he was on a five, or a, not a five, like a three-item Aphel- uh, Aphelios. One, yep. one, two, three four item of Helios. and you know this guy couldn't do anything against the poke varus and yeah. it was just it was interesting kind of seeing that because i don't know you expect by four items and 50 minutes into the game that Aphelios is just one shotting everybody and, and just there's just no action at all the entire no. game it felt like poke 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 skirmish everyone's at half hp everyone resets and it was yeah. just rinse and repeat and, the the one yeah. thing I'll say about that series is <laughs> in game two, Angel had a pretty standout game on eighty LeBlanc. <laughs> yeah. uh, he ended ten zero and eight, which obviously an insane stat line. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say he had multiple triple kills throughout the game, which uh-huh. uh, you know came off the back of some team fighting, but also was just some pretty excellent individual plays by him. Yeah. Um, and it, it turned the game into a bit of a giga stomp by the end. Uh, so I think if you're going to go back and watch WE versus OMG, there's nothing to see in the first game. And the second <laughs> game is a little bit interesting if you if you focus on Angel. Mm-hmm. 100% agree. I didn't, I didn't get to check out the AL series. Mm. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Yeah, I can go real quick. Uh, yeah. First of all, I don't remember if we talked about this during the podcast last week, but you had mentioned to me before that uh, you thought AL was going to be a sleeper pick to actually do well in it this league. It was RA. RA is the one that I think oh, is going to Oh, it was RA. Sleep. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to give you any credit. Then. <laughs> Never mind. But did AL do good or what? They did. They <laughs> okay. did surprisingly well. I uh, was not expecting it from them. There's not a lot of, of big names on that team. Mm-hmm. Um uh, let's see. What do I have? Croco is yeah. on that team from came from uh, the Liz LCK. Sandbox. Yeah, man, he is fun to watch. He is just go all the time. It's mm-hmm. just every button he has is a go button. He just wants to be in there, ganking, going aggressive at all points, which I thought was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you had Hope on his Lucian in the first game. I would say the best Lucian game that we've seen so far. The ten one and six, uh-huh. um, just mega fed. Uh, you had Shanks on his ear for a couple games. I mm-hmm. thought you could tell that he had like these almost really good plays a lot of the time, but yeah. it was. Eh. Oh wait, um, I, actually, one thing sure. I did I did watch game one of this series. Okay. Doc Dom was on Swain, right? Yeah, it was the Swain Pike, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Wait, is that right? That no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Doc Dom and Life coming over also from the LCK. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they looked okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't exciting. To yeah. Me. Um I thought the whole game that that AL FPX series um was not the most fun series to me. One interesting thing that came out of that series in the first game, no, uh-huh. the second games, pardon me, was uh FPX picking a um ball delivery comp. Uh, Oriana Nocturne oh. um, core with yeah. 
support uh they, they had jacks top kaisa ad carry and rel support mm-hmm. so interestingly really straightforward idea on the team oriana yeah. puts the ball onto on nocturne or rel primarily yeah but can also put it on kaisa or jacks if they're going to jump in because they're diving mm-hmm. champs as well yeah the whole team is a dive comp you just want to send one person in with the ball turn the lights off with nocturne yeah it's kind of a wombo combo team, yeah. really uh and just blow them up all in one go and it's actually the second time we've seen that because we saw a little bit of that. Um, I want to say it was in the LCK. And it hasn't worked out either time, these big um, ball comps. Mm. And what it really looks like is there's not enough follow through. Yeah. It's really you send someone in with the ball. It looks really good, but they get so far away from the rest of the team that they can maybe blow up one person and then the rest of the team turns on them and there's nothing that you can do. Mm-hmm. So made for some really cool clips. But yeah. It, they lost and in both games where there's been like this big uh oriana nocturne combo i think both games had rel as well i don't remember what the other game was now um but there's a, a rel in both games as well and both teams ended up losing and i think it was just because it's a very one-dimensional strategy to just mm-hmm. chuck a ball on someone and blow them up yeah uh, and you can't do enough damage from the one combo to actually win the fight mm-hmm. i think i remember seeing that in the Demacia Cup, I want to say. Oh, okay. And it was actually a lot more successful. Like you would, interesting. You would see it more as like a pick, like a pick-based comp. I want to say. Okay. So they would just try to find like their ADC, or you know, if it was a Enchanter support, try to find those guys, pick them off, and then they would have the big team fight. And so it yeah. wasn't really like follow-up damage. It would literally just be the one two of nocturne ori and then mm. that would be enough to to burst down an entire you know adc uh some of the the mage mid laners uh you know just some of the main carries and it was really successful i thought and i was like mm. holy cow like why don't people do this more yeah but i guess i guess we see the other side of that where they're not really finding those picks and you have to try to do that into a team fight and there's just not enough damage to follow through with yeah i just found the other game where it was played and it was actually also in the lpl Mm -hmm. um it might have happened in some other game in another region i just didn't catch it but Uh it happened in game one of edg versus rng which was Uh also a really good series yeah um and it was the one game that uh rng lost against edg Mm -hmm. uh that first one uh, uh-huh. And it was the game where uh, RNG picked this um, Oriana Nocturne Rel comp into uh-huh. EDG, who threw Jack's top for Ole. And that uh-huh. was the game where Ole went 9 0 7 on Jax. <laughs> Complete raid boss, unkillable, just yeah. ran the entire game. And I think that's the problem you run into is you get a bruiser like Jax, or uh, I think even like a cons- bruisers. Yeah, like a Cassante, like some type of, you know, bruise. Anything tank. like that that's going to survive the initial combo, or even if you just can't hit it onto the AD carry largely, mm-hmm. then y- you run out of steam. That's pretty yeah. much what you got. And I think that's what um, RNG ran into in that first game with AD- EDG. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't get to catch too much of that series, but I know that R- RNG ended up taking it. Yeah, they took it 2-1 yeah. over EDG. Um, but if if there's a, a series that you want to talk about more that you caught more of, I'm yeah. happy to move to that. I think we have to move on, finish off the LPL with, with the fourth match that we haven't really hit on yet, and that's the BLG Top Esports. Oh, man. The first match of the LPL season. Yep. Absolute. Well, I thought it was a banger. I thought it was oh, yeah. so exciting. It was so refreshing seeing the LPL. Kind of, you know, when you when you watch the LPL, you're expecting – bloodbath you know you're expecting action every minute of the game and for the most part i say we got that in all three games and i thought that was probably for me the series of the week Uh, oh really okay yeah just in general i thought it was just super fun seeing you know blg with all these expectations uh obviously they won the demacia cup they picked up night we we touched on all these things uh but they they started off hot with shun on brand jungle I want to talk about that. I yeah. absolutely want to talk about Brand Jungle looks broken. It looks it so looks broken. It looks insane. Yeah. It, 
it was played in one other game. Um, Willer in the L- LCK picked it. We, oh, okay. we didn't get to talk about it, but uh, I really like this Fear X team that's in the LCK. I really mm-hmm. hope that they do well. I'm hoping that they get in the playoffs and they, they make like the sixth spot. But um, that aside, both times that it's been played in the LCK and the, uh, LCK and the LPL, it looks like a monster of a pick. Yeah. It, it, it looks z- silly. <laughs> it does. June went eight zero and eight. Yeah, and it looked like any time he walked anywhere, it was just death. Yeah. Like it, this guy c- was completely untouched the entire mm-hmm. game, and it's like watching an assassin that can blow up your entire team at one time. He, he yeah. can do single target. He can you know chuck his um, his e on you. Stun with Q, uses W, and pretty much one shot anyone. Or he can just chuck his ult out and yeah. half healths the entire enemy team. The entire it's team, insane. Yeah, and all he has to do is hit another, you know, W or E after that, <laughs> and it's lights and out. It's spreading. Yeah, yeah. It's it was the ultimate. Like he got ahead early. I think mm-hmm. that this match was the definition of if you can snowball, you win the game. Yep. So I mean, game one, immediately right off the gate, or right out of the right out of the gate, you know, Brand Jungle, clear time was super good. I think he met yeah. it for for a gank, I want to say bot side, and got all those guys ahead. And from there on, it was just game over. Like five minutes into the game, yeah, um, he he clears so fast, mm-hmm. it, it lets him just be in every lane because he can clear camp so quickly. Yeah. He took the I don't remember, I don't know what they're called the grublings the the voidlings the, the void yeah voidlings <laughs> voidlings he can clear those super quick. I I yeah. saw they focused in on him a couple times while he was taking those, and mm-hmm. it seemed like there was ways you could take him even faster than what he yeah. was um, showing. But it just farms super quick. It lets you get into every lane. You're not fighting for lane control with it because mm-hmm. you're jungling. So you yeah. just get to free farm pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and if you're playing against a champ that's not going to invade you, if you get um, ahead early on, you're just walking around the map killing people. And that's what he did. Yeah. And that's basically what happened. <laughs> Shun yeah. just went around stomping on every single lane, setting all the, setting all of his guys up. And yeah. there's really nothing that top esports could do in that first game. No, it was a complete uh, stomp. I, I want to know what... Uh, I wish we could talk to a pro player and say, what are the conditions that makes brand viable? Because mm-hmm. in both the, the Fox game, the Fear X game in the LCK, and this game out of Jun uh, from BLG in the LPL, the pick looked completely unstoppable. Yeah, um, it looked but so it, it was only picked like one time in each series. It wasn't really getting banned. Yeah, it just I seemed know. like this pick Super... That, uh what's super what's the impactful word? Yeah. yeah super but very situational yeah but yeah. i, I want to know from a pro player what is the situation that you take brand into because if you can get a good brand angle it looks like you just win the game mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i mean the entire the entire game mako was getting chucked down or chunked down and jackie love was having to arm out like to safety knight looked disgusting on leblanc I think yep. Knight's AD LeBlanc is probably the best that I've seen so far. Probably in the world. Yeah, yeah probably in the world. Like, this yeah. guy was... So, we I saw Knight two days ago, and then I saw Angels last night. Mm-hmm. And the difference is night and day. And Angels still did super well on the pick. Yeah. Knight just... The way that he's able to space himself and take these angles so that he just, you know, poke... Poke, energize, static shiv, you know, it's, it feels unstoppable and he feels yeah. untouchable too. Yeah. Like the, when he has the mobility and the way that he can weave in and out absurd. of fights is incredible. Yeah. Like you, you would watch mid lane. Cream would be at half health while Knight is just flying around all over, all over the lane, just poking at him the whole time. And there's nothing yeah. Cream could do. Uh, yeah. On the other hand though, game two of this series was just the complete opposite. Complete where opposite. Top esports, they got their early lead. Uh, Jackie Love was on Callista, and yep. there was no turning around from that. He got like three kills in the first five minutes, and yeah. with these top teams, I, I really noticed. I mean, we brought it up earlier, but they know how to finish games, and that was so evident when I was watching top esports, because obviously Billy Billy is you know a top tier S tier team, 
But top esports with the lead that they were given, they're able to just stomp them. And it, it didn't feel really close for Billy Billy afterwards. No. It felt like no matter what was gonna happen, top esports would end up winning. Maybe Billy Billy could find a pick here or there, but it felt like no matter what, it was top esports game to lose. And it, it was and just it, that snowball. Yeah, it came from a huge bot gap. It was it, yeah. it was just an immeasurable bot gap. I think uh, I have a note that Jackie Love was up almost 50 CS at like 14 or 15 minutes. Yeah. And he was up multiple kills, three or four kills, something like that. And I thought Mako's uh, Renata, actually, I thought Mako's Renata and On's Nada in game, uh, Renata in game three were mm-hmm. crazy. I, I yeah. think that this Renata pick in the LPL is the really, bailouts, really good. bro. The bailouts oh my were gosh. nasty. It's insane. It, what you can do that, um, the the bailouts and Renata ult, even handshake. There were some yeah. really great handshake moments in game three. On hits, I think it was on hit this absolutely crazy right under tower, right? On Lee Sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. handshake him, him out of as Q he was, as he was flying in. Yeah, handshake him and just pushed him. He was maybe like an inch away from him on screen. Yeah, saved himself. <laughs> So yeah. I think it's it's bailout, it's handshake, and it's the Renata um, ult that can just fully yeah. stop engages. But I thought both Mako and On had pretty insane games on the champ. Mm-hmm. 100% agree. And I think the one thing that I wanted to point out from this game too was there's a there's a point in the game where I think they were contesting for Baron, mm. and they got a pick and immediately pivoted towards uh, mid lane and taking down all the towers. It's just that type of macro play and the immediate flip that sets these top teams apart. And I think top yeah. esports is one of those teams where you have to keep them in the top four of the LPL yeah. just because, well, obviously their rosters stacked, stacked. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like they know how to close out games. So I think these top four teams, it's going to be really interchangeable with, you know, it's going to be who drafts better and yep. who just has a better day. Yeah, it's that's how tight some of these uh, the margins are between these teams. Yeah, it th- the players on these teams are just incredible. I mean, three six nine mm-hmm. Mako, Tien, Jackie Love, like these guys are they're just insane players. You know. Yeah, and then on the other side, of course, Billy Billy's roster. Oh yeah, is just... yeah. Credit to BLG too. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're, they're, I think um, they're looking to be early favorites to win the LPL. Again, it's really early. They played one series, but you look at the roster too. They got Knight over Yagao. Yagao is <laughs> a great player, but Knight is insane. Yeah. Um, Jun has been playing really well. He's Elk is looks looking insane. like one of the next top 80 carries. Yeah. In the LPL. I mean, he already is, but yeah. he's looking, he's getting better too, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then on, he's on looked up. really good. And bin gigabit. You can you can never count out Gigabit, you know. Yeah, no, this these teams at the top of the LPL are completely stacked, and yeah. it looks like it's going to be really hard to to move these guys out of the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I'm so excited for the LPL season because yeah. just there's so many good teams and good players to watch. It's going to be, be fun. It's going to be super fun. <laughs> I can't wait to see LCK versus LPL at, at MSI and Worlds. Too. Yeah. I think oh. we're going to get some really good games. Yeah, those are going to be absolute bangers. But as far as the LPL now, um, their schedule is so interesting just because they only play everyone once. Um, right. But as far as, you know, games that are coming up, uh, oh my gosh, where is this LPL? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many games it's hard to find. But yeah. Uh, we got Nip I'm trying to playing. see if there. I'm trying to look ahead here and see if there's any. Yeah, LGD we got Nip playing. Nip playing and LGD then... uh, on the 24th, which will have already happened by the time that this podcast goes up. But um, we mm-hmm. we haven't seen it yet because we're we're filming it on a Tuesday. <laughs> um, but yeah. that's going to be really fun to see that Nip lineup. And what are, what are some other ones mm-hmm. you have to call out? I think. One that you guys should definitely tune into is Top Esports versus EDG. That's going to be 3 a.m. on Saturday, so Friday night, technically. Uh, I mean, Top Esports, obviously a team that we know very well. Uh, EDG, I mean, it's Mako's return. you got to tune in for that. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then uh, RNG versus BLG. I think that's going to be a good one, too. That's Friday at 3 a.m. Although I think this pod is already out by then. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, LPL, there's going to be a lot of banger games. And you guys yeah. should definitely tune in. And we'll have all the all the updates for you guys as yeah, well. Yeah, for those of you who aren't complete psychopaths like Grayson is and <laughs> stay up until 4 a.m. watching LPL live for some reason, <laughs> uh, just tune in on, on Friday and we'll we'll give you the rundown so that you don't have to stay watch up. all the games. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do the staying up for you guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He'll do yeah. it all for you. Uh, I think th- that's about it. Yeah, um, I don't have much else to say. Uh, we might have to touch on Window Gate next week. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we're, real quick for for anyone who missed it last week, uh, we talked about how Barrel played on windowed mode, and we got more information during a break uh, on the LCS where we saw Wild Turtle and Jensen also both playing on windowed mode. So uh, we're gathering more information on that, and and we'll get back to you. But Window Gate is in full swing now. Full swing. <laughs> um, and then the last thing before we end off, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the layoffs at Riot real quick mm-hmm. because uh, I don't know if you heard, but um, did, yeah. about 10%, 500 people were laid yeah. off from Riot, which especially when we've had um, such high viewership in so many of these regions in the mm-hmm. LEC, in the LCK, and when we've heard that last year Riot's budget was, I think, higher than it's ever been, to see 500 people get laid off is really brutal. It's tough. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's really disappointing. It's not, yeah. Honestly, it is. And it's I mean, it's hard too for, for people us. who want to get into the gaming scene. And there, but there's people who want to work at Riot. They want to get into the gaming scene through that. And seeing 500 people laid off is heartbreaking. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like it was a bit of a bubble over these past few years. We see yeah. we've seen a lot of organizations too have a lot of layoffs or folding completely. But I think. Uh, like it's, it's disappointing because on our perspective, we're seeing this as like a renaissance of League of Legends and we're trying to grow the game as much as we can and get all the exposure out there. But it's tough when, you know, the body organization that runs the game is, you know, also laying off 500 people. So yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. And, uh, we'll see how everything kind of shapes up moving forward but yeah anyways guys that was episode two of the all chat podcast thanks for joining me and jack here this week and uh you know enjoy the games this weekend make sure to tune in to to the lcs and the lec lck lpl and obviously tune into the all chat podcast and we'll see you next week we'll see you next week